Today we're going to take a little closer look at the rangelands of the southwest and this is going to include some very cool desert scenes. So this is Karen at the University of Idaho and let's just uh, get started and take a look at uh, what affects plants in the desert southwest. Okay, let's go back to our map of Kukler. Uh, remember Kukler was the guy that uh, described many of the vegetation types across the west and today we're going to focus on the desert grasslands which is that yellow part down in the south. We'll also look at desert shrublands, that gold color, and then in at the bottom of uh, California and the southwestern side of Arizona you'll see some sort of really orangey red uh, polygons and those are those cactus and succulent deserts that are so iconic in the southwest. If you take a look at the ecoregions that we're going to talk about today, they, they're all part of what would be the southwestern desert ecoregions, which include the warm deserts, that kind of yellow color, and then the western Sierra Madre Piedmont. And a Piedmont is a level plain at the base of mountains, so a Piedmont um, is often a grass-dominated ecosystem. And then way in South Texas, we have the semi-arid prairies. That would also be included in this ecoregion. So that area outlined in purple on this map is the are the ecoregions that we'll talk about today. So why are they deserts and why are they hot and uh, um, full of shrubs and succulents? Because they're dry. They're hot and dry. So if you look at our precipitation map that we've looked at several times, you'll see that these ecosystems are certainly less than 10 inches, 10 to 15. In Texas, some of those ecosystems are a bit more moist, but they're dominated by shrubs and succulents because those are the plants that are really well adapted to those dry, hot ecosystems. So take a little closer look at the Southwest desert um, climate. Um, what we see, it's a little different than the Great Plains that we studied previously. Great Plains have the most of the moisture, those blue bars on the right-hand side, at the same time when there's warm temperatures, so the uh, red and blue lines are the temperature um, uh, descriptions on these graphs. And so those lines show you that, of course, it's hotter in the summer. And in the plains, the time of high precip is early in the summer and the midsummer. When we get to the southwest, we start to see those, those blue bars shift to the right. So at, in Boulder City, um, Nevada, which is actually, that's actually where Hoover Dam is, and it's at the very base of Nevada there. And um, you'll see that it has a, a blip of rain in the spring, and then it also has a bit of rain in the fall. So it has sort of two patterns of precipitation. Uh, so a, a, a precip in the spring and the fall. And by down by El Paso, they have more of a, what we call a monsoonal climate, something where the precip is really um, accentuated in the fall as opposed to in the spring. So we start to see precip occurring more in the fall, or it could be two, um, two um, times of precip in the spring and the fall, and that would be a, a southwest desert climate. Really not very much climb, uh, precipitation. If you look at these graphs, the monthly precip is, is less than about an inch or two in some cases, so pretty limited precip. Um, there's three main kinds of deserts. When we start talking about the southwest and the warm deserts, uh, we're talking about the Mojave, which is in southern Utah, a little bit in uh, um, Nevada and California, and it's kind of at that, that border with Arizona. And then we'll also take a look at the Sonoran Desert, which is that classic desert in, in southwestern Arizona and southern California. And uh, we'll also take a look at much of Texas and New Mexico is what would be fall, would fall in the Chihuahuan Desert. So again, three kinds of deserts, Mojave, Sonoran, Chihuahuan. Something interesting, especially about the Mojave and the Sonoran Deserts, is these ecosystems were not adapted to fire. Up here on the upper left-hand corner is a picture of a, of a Joshua tree forest. It's, it's a Joshua tree, and it's just not adapted to fire. And there's also not much vegetation between those Joshua trees. So it's not really um, something that would perpetuate fire across the ecosystem. It's really dry and there's just a lot of space between plants, so not a lot of fire. Well, that changed when we started having an invasion of red brome in between those plants, creating a fuel load that, that, ex that connects plants and creates a, a, a fuel base that's continuous and can actually support a fire. So red brome is kind of the cheat grass of this of 
of the southeast, or I'm sorry, the southwest. So we have cheatgrass, and that's been a problem in the Great Basin, of course. But in the southwest, red brome is more common than cheatgrass, and they have the same issue. Cheatgrass creating the fuel between plants, and when that does start a fire, it's a very flammable fuel, and it kills those Joshua trees. They're just not adapted to fire. It was just something that wasn't a part of their um, ecosystem as they evolved. So that's a big problem in this in this region. Let's take a little closer look at those beautiful Joshua trees. Again, they are in that sort of corner area of Nevada, Utah, California, and Arizona. And they are these beautiful yucca-like uh, trees that have arms that lift up and they're, and they're just years and years and years in development and creating those big branching ecosystems. So this picture is in Queen Valley of uh, Joshua Tree National Park. The iconic view of deserts in, Nor in North America and the U.S. is this the Sonoran Desert and the saguaro cactus. So when people think of deserts, this is often what they think of. They think of this tall saguaro cactus with the big arms that are, are kind of moving up to the sky, almost human-like arms. And uh, so this is uh, near um, Arizona. This is, sorry, this is near uh, Tucson, Arizona. Picture taken by Matt Lavin. And um, you can see the big saguaro cactus, but also between them, you'll see some what we call uh, prickly pear cactus that have the big pads and choya cactus, which are these kind of tubes of cactuses and then other little shrubs. But again, there's just not a lot of grass between those shrubs. So this is not an ecosystem that was adapted to a lot of fire. Also not adapted to grazing by large ungulates, although certainly pronghorn and bighorn sheep and others will go through these desert ecosystems. The Chihuahuan is a little bit of a different case. So here's a picture of the Chihuahuan Desert near um, Las Cruces, New Mexico. This is the Oregon Mountains. And in this picture, that that kind of orange or kind of rusty color plant down the middle of the picture is creosote bush, Laria tridentata. It's one that we've studied in this class. And also between those creosote plants is quite a bit of grass. So the Chihuahuan Desert actually had some fire and, and fire is also an important management tool to get rid of some of that creosote. And oftentimes in the Chihuahuan Desert, we see a lot of mesquite all, um, in, in amongst these plants. So uh, the Chihuahuan Desert's a little bit different. It has a little different fire history. And one of the main plants that would be kind of iconic or keystone of the Chihuahuan Desert would be this creosote bush. The other shrubs that you see there are a big uh, tall yucca plant. And uh, there's also Spanish dagger, which is another plant. They, they kind of these yucca-like plants that, that uh, move up above the creosote. Didn't talk a lot about grasslands, but there's um, a lot of grasslands that just kind of intermingled among those larger sh succulent shrubs. And here's a picture from the Santa Rita Experimental Range, which is south of Tucson, Arizona. And you can see between those shrubs is quite a bit of grass. So this is actually pretty good for grazing. There are uh, active cattle ranches in this area and the shrubs in there are mostly mesquite. And fire is a very important management tool to kind of uh, get suppress the, the mesquite get it back into the ecosystem and allow those grasses to grow up and, and create this mix of grasslands and shrublands like you see in this picture. That was a pretty brief overview of rangelands of the Southwest, including a mix of grasslands, shrublands, and uh, succulent plants. And in the middle of this picture is a beautiful plant called Devil's Coach's Whip or Ocotillo. And uh, that when this desert is in bloom, it, it really is stunning. So I hope you enjoyed it and we'll learn some specific plants from this ecosystem.